Hello, YouTube. It's Calm Little Buddy, and I figured I would make a video showing a run that you can play along with. Now, I'm going to put the seed for the run in the description so you can use this exact seed. You just need a mod for it, which will allow you to put the seed in for you. And you can play along with me and learn how to win a, a run at Noita if you're having trouble. If you're one of those people like I was that had a lot of trouble finding a way of winning, this will give some more specifics. It will also show examples and you can play along right with the run so that you can see and use all the same things we do or find things that you can do a little bit better, find things we didn't do, all those sorts of things. Because the last video that I did, I did get some comments that it was very elitist. It was very egotistical. It was very, and that's, that wasn't my intent. I mean, obviously people who know me, who've watched my channel for a while know that I am the furthest thing from egotistical. I was just kind of goofing around saying silly things. And it came off very, I don't know, sounded maniacal, sounded ridiculous. So anyway, this will be less about the philosophical stuff, less about the mental stuff, and more about some of the tricks that you can use to help you actually finish a run. And the great thing is you can be playing with me. We're going to still go over some of the other things, the mental things that you should know in order to get yourself in condition to win a run. Uh, some of the things like like using the community as a resource, um, being patient, looking things up. We talked about a lot of kind of philosophical things, a lot of mental things, habits that you can get into both mental and physical. We also talked about how sometimes skill is not the answer. But to be honest with you, I did really play up the mental aspect and the research aspect. You still do need skill. You still are going to need to play this game for quite some time. And yes, skill can be very helpful. And yes, Plenty of people can beat the boss without ever looking anything up. Um, but what we're talking about is number one, consistency being consistent. And that sort of consistency, a lot of times can be extremely difficult to reach for the majority of players if they don't have the knowledge and the, the proper kind of mindset to attack the game. So what we're doing today is we're going to do a run and I'm going to show you the run in its entirety with just like there, there's like a couple parts I'm going to cut just because they're so boring. Um, mostly digging or I'll fast forward through it. So I've got a little bit of a cold, but we're going to go through this today and talk about some of the things that we could do. Number one, see this potion that, uh, that I have up here, the, the purple potion that's kind of up at the top, uh, the one in position number one for potions. That is a polymorph potion. One of the reasons that we picked that up is to get in and out of the holy mountains. One of the biggest advantages that you can get in this game is knowing how to get in and out of the holy mountains without breaking them so that you can still have the ability to edit wands and to go back in. One of them is a digging solution, which we're going to show. One of them is a teleport solution, which we're going to show and fail at, which we've done in other videos. Um, so I can do it. I promise I really can. And another one is going to be the polymorph solution. There are other ways to do it. There's just uh, kicking the tablet into the wall and getting yourself stuck. And then using the unstuck feature, which is basically tapping uh, A and D back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And will get you unstuck and it will kind of break the wall a little bit. Another one is the bombs. You can stick two bombs behind the statue. We'll, we'll get into some of that stuff. But the ones we're going to show here today are the most common ones, which is the polymorph method. And the, um, the other one that I said. <laughs> the polymorph met method, the digging me method, and the teleport method. The teleport method, I am just terrible at. I can never seem to get myself around it. All right, here's another example. We have two potion bottles, one of which is uh, Berserkium. I am not a fan of Berserkium, so I am going to get rid of some of the Berserkium, and I'm going to go pick up some water. By the way, we're on the beta branch on here, in case anybody's interested. We're going to pick up some water. Always want to have some water to douse yourself, because... Fire is everywhere. Toxic sludge is everywhere. You should always take your water with you. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to go eventually all the way over to the right hand side of this um, this area and we're going to go get a tablet. Now, I, I underuse tablets. I, I'm guilty. Guilty as charged. I don't use tablets as much as I should. But um, I always like to have one and pick one up just in case we get telekinetic kick because then that makes the run like basically super easy. Telekinetic kick allows you to control your kick. You basically grab an object and then you can aim it and kick it wherever you want. And it does massive damage uh, to little guys that can't handle that sort of thing. Okay, uh, hold on. We got a big bad here that we got to take care of. 
we he pumps out a bunch of guys you normally don't want to fight this guy and uh, i'm gonna kind of let me grab this heart i'm gonna back off here and push back a bit some of this is going to be live some of this is going to be overdubbed and some of it is going to be overdubbed pretending to be live all right let me go grab this tablet either way um no matter what we're, we're going to try to keep at least keep this entertaining anything that gets a bit slow i might fast forward through so you can see these guys kind of doing your float up. You let them shoot and then go up. Once you see the, the shot come at you, that's when you want to levitate up. A lot of people levitate right into the shot. They wait, they see the shot, and then they levitate into it. What you want to do is wait for the shot to be right next to you. And then you go, whoop, you just kind of do your one little boop levitate and go up. All right, normally I don't grab the heart right away. I skip it and I go check my perks, but I'm going to grab it because I'm pretty low. So I know I'm kind of screwed up anyway. I don't have enough to buy any of these wands. That's okay. We can come back if we need them. I don't see anything really great anyway. There we go. Look at this perk. Okay, this is stainless armor. As long as I don't have a stain on me, like water or blood or anything, really. Um, even ambrosia and stuff like that. Uh, well, ambrosia doesn't matter because you're basically invulnerable. But I take 50% less damage. You're going to see throughout this run how invaluable this perk is. If you want perk advice, if you want just general perk advice, always take defensive perks if they're available. Reroll if there's nothing there that's suitable for you that, that can provide any sort of advantage. Like, let's say you get three just lousy perks. You know they're just terrible. Try to reroll those. Like, that's why we didn't even have enough for a reroll. So that's one mistake we did make coming in here is we didn't have at least 200 gold for a reroll. You want to come into this first holy mountain with 200 gold. All right. So let's, all right, so here is, I want to show you the polymorph trick. All right, I want to kick this around. I am terrible at kicking the statue. You'll get a lot better at it than I will. Okay. If you point your wand straight down as if you're kind of trying to aim at the ground and then kick, there we go. That's good. All right. So what you're going to do, pour, uh, pour a pool of polymorph, pick a pack of pickle peppers, jump in it. Wait till you get a good amount, fly up, try to get up as quick as you can, get all the way over close to the edge, wait for it to wear off, and look at that. You're straight out of the Holy Mountain, straight out of Compton, and you have no problems whatsoever. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, now the coal pits. The coal pits is your favorite place to be in the early levels. One of the main reasons is this place is laden with gold, and we do have some digging available to us. We'll try to find some better digging as we go along, but we do have a little bit at least. Uh, so what we're looking for here is hearts, wands, and gold. So, uh, yeah, see, our little digamatron here should be able to get us at that gold, I think. Oh, wait, what am I doing here? Uh, give me a sec. All right. Let's get this guy. Oh, 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 he took our wand. I knew there was a wand here, but I was looking for it. All right. Teleport. Very good. Teleport is extremely useful for making a getaway. Even, we talked about last time, making a getaway to an area that you've already been to, trying to back up into an area that's been revealed that you've eliminated all enemies in. With teleport, you can even teleport past enemies into areas you haven't been and just kind of try to keep teleporting to safe places uh, until you reach some place that you can make yourself safe. So teleport is invaluable to have. It's a super defensive spell. Um, and it's also great for making the run not so tedious as far as traveling goes. Small teleport is usually the preferred teleport because it will cast itself quicker. You don't have to wait on the delay of how long it takes. Uh, for see how, see how far that long teleport bolt goes? Small teleport, you could have casted two or three of those in the same amount of time, had better control over where you're going to end up, and also, at the same time, um, cast them faster. Whereas the long teleport bolt... All right, there we go. That's pretty good. We, we blew up those dudes here. Let's kick that over there and see if we can blow that guy up. See, there's some tricks that you can do with a little bit of skill. That's how skill can help you, right? There's skill. Hey, skill. What's up, skill? Get in that water. Oh, speaking of water. Speaking of water, I should probably at some point just fill up this, uh, this whole berserkium with water. Let's do that. Like I said, not a huge fan of berserkium. So we're just going to find a spot where we can kind of pool it up a little bit. 
this isn't ideal. This is probably going to end up running off all over the place. And then we're going to end up with some enemies that are berserk. But uh, willing to risk it. Why don't I like berserkium? Well, yes, the damage is wonderful. That's great. Um, I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of having it uh, as a potion. But it can definitely help you to deal damage in the, in the early game. All right. Get yourself a full drink of water. Big, tall glass of water. Okay, that's not all the way full. Why? Okay, because we're not deep enough in the water. Hold on. Let's put that also in the first spot so we're not pouring polymorph on ourselves. I tend to be somebody who uses the scroll wheel. I do not use the uh, the number buttons to pick what I'm doing next. So scroll wheel. If you're going to be a scroll wheel demon like me, make sure that you put your water in your first slot. That's always a good uh, a good thing to do. All right. So one of the things that I want to talk about is, especially if you're in coal pits, get as much gold as you can. You want to try to get at least 600 gold out of coal pits so that you have the opportunity to reroll and also purchase at least one wand at the next area. If you can get up to 1200 easily without too much worry, that's even better. Another thing we do want to talk about is, see, see this stuff right here, this lava? Normally what I want to do with that is pour water on it and get rid of it. It is it's a trap basically because you're eventually going to end up back in that area and you're going to step in it. I am not going to do that now just so I can see if it'll make me laugh later on when I actually do that and it hurts me. Uh, that uh, toxic sludge down there too, same thing. You want to pour water into it. Toxic sludge when you uh, add water to it turns into water. So we pour some water in there and we can then mix it all up with a couple bolts and then we get another wand. Great. Let's see what this is. Hopefully this will help us a little. Chainsaw, beautiful. That's going to be good. Um, might be a good idea to show you how to get back into the Holy Mountain. Hold on. Uh, should I go back up there first? Let me kill these guys first. Because to get back in the Holy Mountain, you do have to be a little careful with the polymorph. You can't polymorph yourself way, way down low. You have to actually kind of... Um, to kind of get yourself in a good position. Oh, this is not good. Okay, let's get out of here. Teleport. Get gone. Go back to where we know we can go. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. There's that lava again just taunting me. Let me just... Okay, through the magic of editing, we have returned. We are going to show you how to get into the Holy Mountain now with our Polymorph. It's easier for me. I have teleport, so I can teleport up the channel here and kind of land right on the edge. Be careful, land right on that edge. Don't go too far. Sprinkle yourself with just enough Polymorph to turn into a happy sheep with wings and then drop yourself down. As long as you are a creature or an enemy, you can pass through that trigger point without causing the collapse you can do that with teleport you can teleport past that trigger point as well and we can also dig around it which i will show you later on in the run when we get lumi drill right now i'm going to look through these wands and i'm going to try to select uh first of all some offensive spells and then from there i'm going to use those offensive spells for what we need okay we don't need all these teleports by the way all those teleports we can probably get rid of um, a few of them but we need all of this definitely need the the chainsaws all right let's get rid of one two three you're hardly ever going to need more than two long teleports small teleports you might want to keep maybe three or four all right i'm going to look through these ones and then i'm going to show you the ones when i'm done give me one sec okay so worth noting here look i'm making these ones it's great isn't it so hang on let me put the teleport bolts here and all right so see this second one here we have the crit adjuster the uh double spells let's see what happens when we add a chainsaw in here now remember chainsaw does some funky stuff with the time of the spell that makes it a lot faster now you don't have to be an expert at this guys you can just literally put that chainsaw in every spot and try it out and see if the things that you do work feel free to play around and experiment with the wands you don't have to like go and read these in-depth articles this is pretty simple to just pick stuff and move them later on as you make the more in-depth wands of course there could be the difference between you know life and death for your character if you're not really paying attention to how you build a wand but initially it's good enough to just kind of play around and fool around move the thing around like switch this around see is that any faster Looks about the same. Now, of course, this is a shuffle wand, so it's really not going to make that much of a difference for us. The chainsaw did make it faster from where it was, so we can 
leave that as is. Let's make a digging wand real quick and then we can get the heck out of here. I'm gonna try to do the teleport trick, but I'm gonna fail at it, I know, because I'm terrible at the uh, the teleport. But yeah, that's, that's very fast for a digging wand for coal pits. I'll show you a little bit of the digging in coal pits um, and tell you about one difference between chainsaw and loomy drill that you have to be very, very keenly aware of. Um, and then we'll kind of fast forward and get to the next uh, point of the show. All right, let's see if we can sneak ourselves out of here. Yeah, that's better. That's not using any mana. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our shooter, our digger, and our teleport. All right, let's see if we can do it. And you got to kind of just sneak up here a little bit and then oop, oh, I missed. You got to aim for that gap just above the channel that heads up. All right. So see how well this thing can dig. If you got chainsaw, you can dig through anything in the coal pits, anything inside the coal pits. You can't dig stuff to the outside. One great thing about chainsaw is it does not destroy gold when you're digging. So you can dig right into a gold pile and it won't disappear. Whereas Lumi Drill, you have to be careful with Lumi. You have to dig from underneath very carefully so that you don't destroy the gold. If you try to dig from the top with Lumi Drill and just kind of cut through the gold, you'll end up deleting the entire stack of gold, the entire glob of gold that's in there. Let me just kill these guys and then I'll show you here. But with Chainsaw, you just dig, 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 and the gold is automatically picked up as you're digging. It doesn't destroy it, which is a very, very, very big thing. It's a big plus. A couple of things I do want to point out is you want to attack these zones from the bottom, right near where the teleporters to the next holy mountain are. As long as the next holy mountain you know is safe or has not been explored yet and doesn't have Steve or Scott waiting for you. Attack them from the bottom, that way you always have a way to get back and teleport away from any danger. You can just teleport right into the holy mountain. Attacking them from the top down is okay because you have kind of a roof above your head. All right, these, these hives, you definitely want to kill them from far enough away where they're not spawning things. So just sit back, use a long range thing, and there you go, you kill it. But if you attack these guys from the bottom, two things that this can do for you is it allows you access to the teleporters if you run into trouble. You could be on one life, or you could be just about to die. You've got 10 life, and you've got toxic sludge on you, and it's ticking away. Jump right in there. Get to the Holy Mountain, get to that water, cleanse that toxic sludge off you and grab that health bar. The other thing it does let you do is you can get to either side of the Holy Mountain and that way you get to the EDR, which is the extremely dense rock. Oh, this is going to be a little rough. The extremely dense rock, because the extremely dense rock is, uh, oh, another guy, huh? The extremely dense rock is easier to dig through once you have Lumi Drill than the other uh, stuff the brickwork of the the holy mountains so it's easier to kind of travel through zones or around zones here's a heart one thing also about these hearts get to know the formations because the hearts are always going to be in specific spots in formations the formations change their location so like it's almost like a grid there's a pack patchwork of predetermined layouts and they kind of go in squares and each square has you know, different things that'll be in it. And only certain types of formations that will pop up that you'll recognize will have hearts. Look for those formations, memorize those formations. That way, when you see them pop up, yes, they show up in random spots on the map, but they're always the same, like 12, 18 uh, formations in each zone that you can memorize, learn their layout, and that way it'll help you. Anyway, go along this bottom, you can get to the EDR. And once you get to the EDR, you can dig your way around the Holy Mountain a lot quicker than trying to dig through the Holy Mountain. Let's fill up our water. All right, so I think that's one I wanted to show you here. Let's teleport to the EDR just so we can, all right, here we are. Now take a look. We can't, with our current digging, we can't dig through this, see? Just to show you, chainsaw as useful as it is for many different things, and it's gonna be extremely useful when we're in the snowy depths. Um, it is not as useful to get through EDR. That's what you need Lumi Drill for. All right, let me pop forward a little bit and uh, we'll catch you guys in a few seconds. All right, time to David Lee Roth this thing. Jump. All right. We don't need the heart right now. Skip the heart if you've got over 100. A lot of times you can survive. Leave that heart in case you want to come back in. We are going to be sure not to collapse. Ooh, Lumi Drill. We're going to be sure not to collapse this holy mountain whatsoever. We desperately do not want to collapse this holy mountain. That would be a travesty. We really need a place to add our wands. Okay, we're going to take this as a defensive barrier here. Permanent shield. Very useful. Not the greatest of the shields. Repulsion field is better than this. Some of the repulsion sectors 
might argue be even better than this. Of course, our stainless armor is much better than this. And any of the immunities are better than this. All right, so I'm just looking at these wands. I'm looking for something that has a decent amount of mana to manage these Lumi drills. I don't really have much to manage these Lumi drills with. I still need them because we need a good way to dig. So what we're going to have to do, there's going to be a little fast forwarding that's going to have to go on while I dig our way out of this holy mountain. Because that is the next thing that I want to show you is how to dig out of the holy mountain. I'll get this lined up. I'll explain it to you. And then from there, I'll fast forward and you kind of see me zip through like um, some sort of crazy hedgehog, blue hedgehog usually. Okay, the third and probably, in my opinion, easiest way to get out of the holy mountain, sometimes the slowest way, is to dig yourself a little corridor up the side of this part of the exit. So two things to note, do not dig too far over to the left. If you go too far over to the left, you will get uh, our little friend there. Angry Steve will come out and you'll have to fight him. You can see you can kind of fly up there. Don't dig too far over to the right either. You want a little bit of a wall to guide you so that you don't end up accidentally popping out the tiniest bit of your foot and collapsing the Holy Mountain. So it's a bit of a delicate operation, but you can find on the wiki articles that will literally show you on a screenshot the exact area that is safe to dig in. It'll show you where the trigger area is for crushing the mountain. It will show you where the trigger is for summoning Bad Guy Steve. So, and if you don't know who Bad Guy Steve is, if you try to dig your way out of a holy mountain and you don't do it very carefully in certain sections, you will then get a message that said, you have angered the gods. In fact, we'll we'll get it later on and we'll talk about why, um, why we do that later. Uh, but you will anger the gods, and then this little guardian, some people call him the shopkeeper, some call, call him Steve, he has a Norwegian name, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. Uh, Steve Ari, I think it is, which is not that bad. And if you trigger him early enough, you'll get him at every single holy mountain, no matter what you do from then on. He'll be every single holy mountain three times. And then the fourth holy mountain you go to after triggering him, you will then get scowled. Scout is like his angry big brother who is even worse. Steve you can avoid. Steve you can hide from. Steve you can dig a hole in the wall and hang out and he can't get you. Scout can dig through the walls and will dig through the walls and will aggro onto you from very far away, find you and kill you. Steve also has a shield around him which you've got to get through to do any damage. Scout has like a double, triple, quadruple shield. Lots of immunities, and you can't do anything crazy with him. Steve, though, Steve is not that bad. If you can freeze him, you got him. If you've got freeze, any sort of freeze, you can take Steve down. If you've got Ambrosia, you can take Steve down. I would even argue with Ambrosia, you can take Scout down without too much trouble if you're successful at it. Anyway, the whole point is you don't want to trigger him this early on. Not this high up. Not this high up, because there are no guarantees in your run. This is mistakes that people make is they anger the gods early, and then they pay for it later. They're like, I finally got to jungle. But all of a sudden, now they try to get to the end of jungle. And they end up running into Scout, the big bad cop, because they triggered Steve in the second holy mountain. Anyway, so here's what we're digging. See how we're digging up and around? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. And we are going to dig straight up. We're actually going to go to the level above us. And there's a reason for that. But we're going to the level above us. So I don't want to sit here and bore you to death. Let me fast forward so you're not just like sitting here watching me dig a pixel at a time. Tell you what, change of plans. I just realized that there's no reason to go back up to coal pits right now except for gold. Because we won't be able to make a better one than what we have for digging with Lumi. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to show you how to get through snowy depths straight down pretty quick. So we're going to change back to chainsaw. Chainsaw is all we need in snowy depths. It'll go a lot faster than Lumi. So we're going to put the Lumi away and we're going to hope to find a wand. We've got 700 gold. That should be enough to get another wand at the next area. We'll find something that will help us dig a little bit better when we get to the next holy mountain. So as long as we've got everything, we're also going to grab this heart. I don't normally do this. Normally I would wait, but because it's snowy depths, I want to have all the health I can just in case, because even if we make it to the next holy mountain with one health, one health is all we need, right? Snowy depths is a pain. So here's what we did. We dug our little hole around and actually this is good because you can see now the exact path that you need to follow. It's like an upside down L or a backwards seven. And then we're going to go down into snowy depths. And what we're going to do from here is we are going to very carefully 
snipe our way through some of the enemies and try to go as straight down as we can. You could, in theory, just dig like through here, you know, and go really as slow as you want to be. I'm going to try to do this uh, midway. I'm going to do I'm going to be very mid about this. Part of it is going to be digging. Part of it is going to be just uh, trying to beat these enemies up as much as I can. Already taking a few too many hits. Let's um, let's see how quick we can dig this. No, oh, that's too much. Too much blood. All right, forget it. Go around the side and blow that up. That gives us a little extra space. Gets us through. Always try to blow up those explosives when you're far away from them usually want to blow them up before you get to them or after you pass them all right watch out we got a sniper here oh i i threw my tablet for some reason i was trying to do a tablet kick maybe i i don't know maybe no i i just i i like i said i'm a <laughs> i'm a scroll wheel guy i'm that awful scroll wheel friend that you have and um sometimes when i do it i I misclick, so let me get let me get my tablet. Gotta be careful here. We don't wanna we wanna destroy it because we do have Lumi. I did put Lumi on the uh I did put Lumi on the digging wand just to give us a little bit of extra fast sharp digging and also a little bit of damage if we need it to come out of a hole and poke somebody in the face. Lumi drill does a lot of damage to these early enemies, not so much to the later enemies, unless you've got wands specifically set up to send Lumi drill to them with timer. But for now, we'll just kind of dig our way. Dig your way as safely as you can. Snowy Depths does not have a lot of really good loot early on. I mean, it has better stuff than you have usually. And if you see something you want to go for, go ahead and go for it. A lot of the wands in Snowy Depths are going to be inside pockets of water, which are safe, generally speaking, as long as you don't drown yourself. But... You want to remain as safe as possible. And when you're coming out of these little ice packs here like this, instead of just jumping right out, instead of just jumping right out, fire your, your bolt wand. And we can get into like uh, different types of bolts and what the different types of bolts do. But generally speaking, you know, you want a wand that is going to be fast and is going to be shooting longer range and not completely dying to lack of mana so stay in here stay in here don't jump don't pop through yet if you can kind of shoot around down below you a little bit see if you can soften up any targets that are down there carefully 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 okay watch out oh yeah that's bad look at that though look at how much i did not take that much damage from that that has to do with having the projectile shield and also having the armor didn't take that sniper bolt will usually chunk you for a really really hefty amount so that's impressive that's impressive just that one encounter there is enough to justify those two perks and to show you what those two perks can do for you especially in combination now if i can get um the perk that uh that makes sure i don't have stains it removes stains off my armor real quick That'll be great. And if I can get Repulsion Field, that will be awesome. If I can get those two, great. If I can get an immunity, even better. But one of the great things about the perk system is you don't necessarily always need the immunities. You can you can make do with just some of the other defensive perks that are there. All right, let's see what this wand has got. What you got, friend? Uh, ice. Yes. Freeze. Freeze. This is important. You see freeze, you take freeze. Big, big deal big huge deal for beating the boss later on and can also save your tuchus as you're going through levels freeze is god tier for, for newer players for more experienced players it's it's fun to have freeze but they they, they get kind of bored with it because it's like oh yeah freeze again yeah yeah all right let's bolt out of here as quick as we can let's get back up here we're gonna we're gonna add freeze to our wand because this is gonna make a huge difference all right, uh, let me just quickly, this wand is pretty good too, so we're going to see. Let me let me fix this up and I'll get right back. Okay, made a few adjustments to the digging. Wow, that's much better. Okay, so now we have good digging, 
good enough where we can skip all this snowy mountain BS and I can go ahead and show you something else that I wanted to show you right along. So it was kind of cool that we hopped in there and yeah, we could have gone all the way through snowy mountain if we wanted to, but now I am going to show you my favorite thing to do of all time, which is let's go dig back up to coal pits. Let's go over to the side of the right hand side where the EDR is. Let's take the shortcut and go find ourselves some quality special wands. I'm going to fast forward and you can join me. Watch, you can watch me do some crazy digging. Okay, so you're going to want to dig up back into your coal pits over here. Then I'm just going to grab a little bit of gold here, I guess. Looks like I'm going nuts. Okay, get all the way over to the EDR and you're going to dig diagonal down towards where snowy depths would be. Sorry, I had a little spot there. Yeah. Dig all the way down to here. Once you get into this corridor type area, you're gonna go all the way over to the right hand side. And then you're gonna dig straight down from where the right hand side ends. We're going to do a lot of this fast forwarding on the digging parts because there's quite a few of them and it's some people really get upset about the digging. I'll talk about that in a sec, but here we go. Here's a spot with a couple of free wands. Okay. This has glimmer, that red glimmer there. It also has a uh, double spell there, a uh, duplicate spell. Glimmer reduces your cast delay between spells. So red glimmer is always a favorite. So let's grab let red glimmer. Let's see what this has. This also has, um, this has recharge time, reduce recharge time. So that's good. And that one itself is Garbo because of the recharge time is over one second long. Let's uh, we let's take the I can, do we, yeah let's take the teleporter and go back into the snowy mountain. This will be nice and easy. I was gonna I was gonna shoot back up here, but um, I guess I, I I guess I will shoot. No, let's go to the teleporter. That'll put us right here. We can teleport up and in and we can remake our wands and then we will head back and grab that second wand. Hold on. Let me just I'm going to go back and grab that second one. Once we have that second wand, we'll come back to you and, and finish up what we're doing. OK, I went back and I got that other one and I did a little bit of editing to make our digging a bit faster. And then I went back up into coal pits. Grabbed some more gold and now I want to show you go to the top of coal pits. This is another thing that you can do. We're going to go get the extra heart, um, the extra life. So we're going to have more max life. And then we're also going to get a free heal up in the uh, collapsed mines. The easiest way and safest way to do this. Um, I mean, collapsed mines isn't that big of a deal once you've got a little bit of extra stuff. But seeing as how we're down here anyway, and we have to drain a dark area. Um, it's kind of important that we... Uh, that, well, not important. We, we can do it this way and it's a little bit easier. One thing that you want to make sure that is when you go to the area you're about to go to, you're going to want to have light, the spell light on your digging wand, on your Lumi drill wand or your uh, whatever else that you're using to dig through rock. Even if it's chainsaw, you definitely want a light spell attached to it. You can see how the spell itself uh, is kind of blinking as we go. See how it blinks a little bit, that little flash of light? Because the area that we're going to has magical darkness, has permanent darkness effect, which cannot be dispelled by anything except for a light spell. I believe a torch spell will work as well. But even, you know, adding, you know, Lumi Drill doesn't do anything by itself. It's like it has to be an actual modifier spell that, that adds light to a spell or provides light from a spell in its description it can't just be something that looks like it should give light like you can't just build a crazy lightsaber wand out of lumi drill and think it's going to work so dig straight up on this left hand side of the holy mountain just above coal pits and you will come to an area that has extra hearts in it, it has a heal a full heal and it has an extra max health you always want to grab the, the max health first and that's what we're going to do. And then you will grab the heal after. If you grab it in the reverse order, what's going to happen is you're going to heal first. You're going to grab that max health and then you're going to have health missing, technically. Um, so it's better to grab the max health first, obviously. I mean, I think most people would be able to figure that out, but it's worth mentioning. All right, so we're getting a little closer. When you start to see the gray rock, you know that you're close. 
So we want to dig, and the reason I, I, I dig up from coal pits to do this is we've got to drain a ton of water. And this just makes it easier to drain the water off. You drain it right down into coal pits. Nobody in coal pits cares. They're like, yeah, fine, send some water down. Not a big deal. They don't complain. So here we are where the water comes out. This also puts us right close to where the usually the health up is, the max health up is. Now, it's not always in this position. They're not always in these positions. In fact, you're going to see that when we do this, we end up digging to an area where it normally is and it's not there. How do I know that? I don't know. It's just a premonition I have that this is going to happen to us. I'm, I'm not even sure how I managed to, to know these things. It must be like psycho or something, a psychic or something. All right, so let's dig our way through here and drain all this. This is important to let this drain. Uh, be careful because the water suction motion here really messes with you know, messes with your levitation so it's hard to levitate out of this stuff it probably is never going to be a point where your character is going to drown but it can be unpleasant trying to try to levitate over and over again and not being successful at it all right you can already see where that light spell is coming in handy because the darkness that's up there it's hard to see through now see how it doesn't disappear at all but if you put the light on now you can see we're going to shut the light off. Can't see. Turn the light on. Now you can see. All right. So we want to dig through. Uh, this looks like we've got a weird formation. I'm still going to try to play it as if it was a regular formation, but we definitely have an oddball formation. One of the things that you can do um, if you run into this, you get the seed for the run, and then you can go ahead. There it is. It's right there. That is the health up. You can tell because of the plus. If it does not have a plus, it is the heal, and you don't want it yet. So normally what you would do is you would go to the top area of this. I'll, I'll show you in a sec. Why am I digging this? I think I can just go fly straight up, but... Uh, the heck, I'm almost there anyway. All right, yeah, dig, dig, dig. Yeah, okay. All right, so see how there's this other area, another way to get in from collapsed mines. Usually, if you dig straight at this point, you will find it. But with this being one of those weird episodes, it's not going to be there. So you're going to get your seed, the number for your seed, which you can find by pausing the game and looking in the bottom left-hand corner, which we're going to do in a second. And then you're going to take it to a website like uh, the Noita Seed Tool website, you can just type in, if you go to Google, you can type in Noita Shift Calculator. And the first website that comes up is usually going to be the one that you want. You will enter in your um, your seed. Actually, the name of the website is <laughs> it's cr4xy.dev forward slash Noita and then that will bring you to where you enter your seed in. The seed for this run, by the way, if you do want to play along with this run, and I will put it in the description, because that might be a great way to uh, to look this up, is, yeah, let's, let's head down. Yeah, there's the seed right there, down on the bottom left, you can see it. Let me, uh, let me pause it here for you so you can take a look. Okay, both the seed and the website will be in the description if you want to go to that website and take a look at any seed that you have or take a look at this seed or if you want to play along with this seed by the way there you go now you have it all right so now we know exactly where we're supposed to be looking it's actually going to be down here this is where we're going to do a little bit of magic of editing again because well it's going to take me a little bit to get there so let me fast forward a tiny bit here for you okay so let's dig straight across according to what i saw on the map it should just be we sneak up and under here. There it is. A little tough because you it's like, oh, she's trying to find my way through with this flickering light and everything. It can be it can be a hassle, but it's worthwhile. So we're going to go grab that heel and then we are going to head back all the way back, I believe, to Snowy Depths. So let me head back to Snowy Depths. I'll catch you up when I get there. OK, so here we are back at Snowy Depths. Let me just show you really quickly, like now that we've kind of sorted our wands out, our wands are a little bit better. Snowy Depths is not nearly as scary as it was in the beginning, so we can actually see how fast that fires now. So we can we can go now and not have to 
try to make our way through every little piece of rock here. Sometimes what you can do instead of digging straight down through the rocks, like digging right through here, is you can just sneak down the side walls. The side walls at least give you something to put your back up against. And if you have to, you can dig an emergency hole if you've got decent enough digging and just kind of hide out for a second. Or you can blink your way back up with teleport. So we can scale down here. And even if we hit like an Uko or something, we can use our tele wand to back up, literally back up to where we came from. Now notice I'm just like peppering the area beneath me and to the sides with all sorts of bolts just to make sure it looks like there was a wand over here. I'm going to see if I can find it. Um, sometimes it's important to try to take a few risks here and there. Oh, there's a wand in here as well. Well, let's take a look at that. One great thing is that some of your bolts are going to be able to actually dig through this snow as well. So you don't have to use your, your Lumi all the time. Or if you don't have Lumi, oh, that's great. Uh, we could technically use that to go and kill the bridge boss. Probably not going to, but we could. That's a whole nother thing if you, because we don't have, I don't think I have homing. If I had a homing spell, we would take that right up to Bridge Boss and homing with that big white cross. Bridge Boss will just melt to that. You just hit him with it once. Oh, I need timer too if I was going to do that. So probably we won't do that. Never mind. You need timer. You need a spell with a timer. That's long distance. And homing would be good if you had it, but I, you really wouldn't need homing, I guess, if you had the spell with the timer. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go through here. We can get a little extra gold. And I'll show you that this... It's not nearly as daunting once you have a weapon that can handle the enemies that are in here. The problem is you usually, your first run through snowy, uh, no, no good. Ooh, careful, watch out because sometimes you can get stuck under that ice and drown. It happens more often than, you, than you'd like to admit. And if you're firing a weapon, it will freeze the ice above your head for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah, snow is much less daunting once you've kind of gone through it. So here is the next holy mountain. Holy, holy. So what we're going to do after we check out this holy mountain, we don't need this. We're going to go to the spell room, which is going to be all the way to the left of Heesey Base. So the holy mountain just above Heesey Base. Uh, that would be a good one to pick up. I'm not going to grab it right now. Uh, we're running kind of a different build right now. That's also a nice a nice spell to have. Maybe we grab that because look at that. That spell. Whoa, the mana on that's pretty outrageous too. All right. Let me see what we have for perks. And then I will build some wands. And then I'll probably fast forward a little bit through some of the digging. So that we don't have to have you sit through it again. Because uh, like I said, the digging is just... It can be phenomenally boring. Yeah, I think we're going to grab that wand. Let's go... Grab that now. Just the yeah, we don't need that. Let me let me do some cleanup here. Okay, so we have our wands kind of sorted out. Let's put them in the good positions here. We've got a nice, fast attack wand. We've got our digging wand. We've got our telly wand, and let's go see what our perks are. And then I will again fast forward through. Ah, uh, oh yes, 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 repelling cape. That's going to reduce the stains. That means that stains are going to go away quicker. means my 50% damage reduction is going to be in effect more often. That is perfect. All right. Let me fast forward, dig, and I'll show you where we're going next. Gotta love the music in fast forward. That's just awesome. So we're going to dig up to the bottom of snowy depths here. And we are going to crawl across the bottom all the way over to the left-hand side where the... Holy Mountain ends and just to show you what I'm talking about as far as how it's easier to climb through like at any point if we get into a situation where it's a dire emergency we can jump back into that Holy Mountain uh, oh we have a little friend there oh he's gonna stay I'm not taking it with me so also down the bottom you're not gonna run into you'll run into enemies of course I mean there's gonna be a lot of them but uh, you're going to not at least have enemies below you and above you. They're mostly just going to be to one side and maybe a little bit above here and there. We've got quite a bit of enemies here. You can see, though, you can back up. That's the other thing, too, is this gives you plenty of backup room. So instead of starting out where you've got nowhere to go and you're just kind of wondering, should I back up should i go forward 
you know, you don't have to fly at all either. You can, well, you, you do have to fly, but you don't have to, like, f worry about your levitate as much. You can land on the ground. So it just makes it easier to, to travel along the bottom here. Ah, uh, that has got mm, two, no. And once we get over to the side, we'll have another dig site that we want to do. I mean, even see running into a couple of executives here, we can, we can make our way through this. This isn't super bad. This is, this is easy peasy. The only thing that would bother me here would be water in an Uko because of the electricity and getting stunned and I don't have electric community. But maybe we could take one small hit with our our barrier here from an Uko. All right, even that, not so bad. I mean, we're, we're losing a little bit of health here, but remember, health is a resource. Always manage your health as a resource. Don't look at it as in like, oh, well, you know, I'm dying. You're gonna, you're gonna get heals. You're gonna get heals at the Holy Mountains. So you spend that health in little tiny increments and as little as possible. Again, having the armor, the, uh, the stainless armor and the repelling cape to take the stain off. Look how quick that stain comes off. Look how quick that one came off. And having the barrier. Okay, here we are at the side. So from here, we're going to dig straight down to the bottom part of the mountain. And then once we hit the bottom of the mountain, we're going to go directly to the left. I'm going to fast forward. You'll see once I hit the bottom of this mountain, taking that hook directly to the left. And you're going to keep going for a long way. It's going to feel like you've gone too far. And you're going to feel like, I must have missed it. I must have missed it. But it really is quite a distance. All right, let me fast forward so you're not sitting around here waiting an entire hour for this. All right. So again, dig down to the bottom. Once you see the holy mountain ends, you're going to go to the left and just keep heading left. If you do this in real time with relatively slow digging, it's going to feel like absolute psychological torture. But you just keep going. Don't panic. It will eventually pop up. We will eventually end up there. Once you see this gray rock, you know that you're there. And here you are at the eyeball room or the eye room <laughs> we should call it there's a way to teleport here directly using the hourglass room which is just off of the side of the hisi base sometimes it's on the left sometimes it's on the right but you need to have um, some form of teleportation fluid to put into it uh, either stable or unstable i think it's either one of the two uh, but you have to have that to, to get it to operate. So I usually just dig there and I do not teleport back. Okay, there's Omega cast all spells in the wand. Could be useful. Not going to use that. Not going to use that. Uh, not going to use that. Is there anything else in here that we really want? <laughs> Nothing wonderful. I will take the, uh, the energy shield with me. Now you can teleport back if you want to. You need to be careful though. If you teleport back into the hourglass room, sometimes it will cause the hourglass to break, which will cause the entire thing to break. The entire, um, the entire room will break and it will earthquake literally fall down on top of your head and destroy you. All right, so let me get back to the place that we want to be here. Is teleport going to work? Oh, teleport will work. Okay. So I'm going to dig and show you the hourglass room and show you the, the shop. Let me fast forward this as well. This won't take nearly as long. We just have to travel over to here. All right, here is the hourglass room. Sometimes it's on this side, on the left-hand side. Sometimes it's on the right-hand side. We happen to luck out on this run. It's on the left-hand side. So when we're coming back from the eye room, we just come right back here. Now we're going to dig straight down. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about is see that that's the hourglass that you would put your teleportatium, teleportatium, teleportium, whatever the heck it is. You put it in there if you if you can fill it up usually just takes about one vial you can then teleport it will open up a teleport ooh 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 ooh, ooh. uh we're not going to bother with that right now these are all interesting i will probably should i take thunder charge and again we're on the um we're on the beta the beta so we're on the beta we can uh we can change spells outside of the holy mountain we can't fix wands but we can change spells outside the holy mountain so let's uh what do we want to get rid of probably i don't think we need the light spell anymore do we and get rid of light. We'll grab the, uh, the thunder just in case. And now one of the things is you can dig straight down and get to the next area or you can kind of walk your way down the side. I'm going to dig fast forward time again, folks. 
I've stated in my previous videos, I like to dig. I mean, what can I say? It's my thing. I dig it. All right, so <clears throat> here's the bottom where we can now go and teleport into the Holy Mountain. From here, we might have to play it a little bit more uh, where we kind of going to go through the areas of stuff. We don't have a lot of gold. That's another problem. We could, technically speaking, go run back and, and make some gold, but we're going to grab enough gold in jungle. So you don't have to worry too much. How much gold do you want after Snowy Depths and Heasy Base? I would say after Snowy Depths, you probably want about a thousand if you can have it for the Holy Mountain after Snowy Depths. But the one, the one after Heasy Base, you don't necessarily need a lot. If you can get in and out of the Holy Mountains, don't worry too much. You'll, you'll make a ton in jungle as long as you have a decent wand that you can do some battle with. All right, here we are. We don't need the heart right now. Okay, it looks like we... Ugh, we don't have a lot to choose from here. I mean, we do, but technically, these are, these are not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for a way to get a, a decent damage wand. All right, we'll grab the one up here. Extra life, just in case. Yeah, I don't see any of these other things being worth it. All right, so we got the extra life, so we're even further protected. Uh, from here, is there anything else that I want to do? I didn't really grab anything new, did I? Uh, let's, let's go ahead now, though, and change over to freeze. That way we can freeze any enemies. Uh, maybe there's a few things that we can do here. Let me play with these wands a bit and get right back to you. All right, so I just jumped forward. We didn't do much with the wands. We, we just kind of pepped one up a tiny bit, so we got a little bit of extra pop and some freeze. You can see freezing these enemies gives us a tremendous, tremendous... Ooh, that's a good-looking wand. Gives us a tremendous advantage... It's amazing what you can do in places like jungle. If you've got a, a wand that rapid fires with freeze on it, you can pretty much call your shots. Okay, so after a little messing around, I think what I've decided is I'm going to have two wands. I'm going to have one with the freeze, and I'm going to have one that's a straight damage wand. You can see the one way down the bottom, that's our straight damage wand. The one way at the top is going to be our freeze wand. That's going to allow us, if we need to, to freeze things. That way we can get through this level. If we need to freeze someone, that's a bit slow. Uh, ticka, 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 ticka. It's still too slow. Let's do... It's a bit faster. Because the problem with this one is it, it has two spells. It fires two spells. You see how it says no shuffle and underneath this two, it says two. So it's already firing two spells. So you have to account for that because that can throw the timing off. You want it so that it's going to wrap with just one spell left open at the end. So let me... That's worse. So I kind of just mess around and I play with it until I can figure out what works. Um, I think maybe we need to take that back on uh how can we do this maybe we just leave it like this for now we just use it to freeze if we have to and then we can use that as our damage probably our best bet is uh we can freeze when we need to and we can and i know i just said freeze gives us this really great advantage but we're just a tiny tiny bit short of mana if we can find a wand that has extra mana has add mana. Add mana would be spectacular. But right now, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we can get through this. So, one of the things with jungle is you want to get over to the right-hand side. Don't go down the left-hand side. For the life of you, please, dear lord, do not go down the left-hand side of jungle. There is a nasty, nasty area filled with uh, walkers that you can't kill. Filled with... Uh, Lucky legs. Lucky legs that you cannot kill. They're they're invincible. They're they're undefeatable. So you're gonna have to be very, 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 very cognizant of that. Stay on this side. So we're gonna use the top. Sometimes I'll go straight down through straight down through and try to make our way through the bottom, but usually in this case, it's easier to use the top as a shield to keep things off of our top side. So we only have to worry about things to the right and below us, <clears throat> as opposed to having to worry about the right, above, beneath, left, 
See, like in this situation, now I've got way too many things all around me. I've got stuff on top, I've got things below, I've got things to the left, I've got things to the right. Back up, put yourself in a situation where you control choke point. Even now when a guy tries to sneak around through the back, I can still, I've still got spots to back up. This is the difference between you know, trying to skill your way through it, trying to push your way through it like you would in other roguelikes. Ow. And really allowing that extra few seconds of patience. Manage your resource. I mean, we're already zooming our life away. We're totally losing uh, the life total that we had. We're spending that resource a little too quick. Let's go through. Let's see. Um, no. And at least if we're going through here, we know nothing's going to eat us from the top, except for maybe these guys. Those Lukey Legs guys can eat through everything. So technically, he could join us from up top, but he's not going to. He's going to stay there. All right, so that's good. We got that guy. Remember, don't chase gold. Gold is valuable. Gold is important. But not as important as your health total at this point. You will get enough gold. All right. I think this section, maybe we jump forward a little bit. Yeah, let me fast forward here. Get us down where we need to be. All right. So we're going to get all the way over to the side. Pick up the heart. Once we find the, the rock, the EDR, we'll dig a little bit through the EDR until we reach Dragon Cave. Now, Dragon Cave, the dragon sometimes drops some pretty quality wands, but the dragon has some specific conditions that you need to have in order to beat the dragon. Ambrosia can help, uh, but you're going to need to read up on the dragon. If you want to take on the dragon and get that free wand this early on, make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you've read everything that you need to read and make sure you understand exactly what that fight is about. There are easy ways to quote unquote cheese the dragon, Make sure you know which ones are actually going to work, because some of them just don't. Some of them just don't. You, it sounds like they're going to work, and it's like, well, if this works, shouldn't this work? And it just doesn't. I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to do too many spoilers. This is just kind of like as spoiler-free as we can get for some of the, the side stuff. All right, dig your way all the way to the bottom. And... And... Let's get to the holy mountain. Continue on. This is just a little bit of fighting going on here. Don't worry about it. Oh, hey, yeah. Dragon's blood. Let's get ourselves a potion vial. Let's empty out. We don't need the polymorph anymore. We can get out of the Holy Mountains pretty easy now. So let's dump the polymorph out. Polymorph can still be useful for a few other things, but I, I think at this point, it's safe to say like that our main purpose, our main reason for getting the polymorph is pretty much gone. So we can dump that out. We're going to go grab the dragon's blood because if you drink dragon's blood, you can see dark spaces on the map and spaces that are not immediately in your view. So get your potion bottle out, grab all of the dragon blood that you can, fill up that entire potion. And we should even probably eat some before we go. But let's just grab it first and then let's get in the Holy Mountain and see what we've got for our next adventure here. All right, so Holy Mountain. We're gonna grab the heart because we're pretty beat up and we're gonna go through some tough territory. So let's, uh, sorry, I'll break there. Let's take a look at these wands real quick. Uh, we can't afford, well, no, yeah, we can afford at least one of these. Let's see if there's any of these that look really good. Uh, yeah, I want that glimmer. But do I want the glimmer versus, uh, what's that, necromancy? I think that's necromancy, yeah, necromancy. Okay, no, necromancy, not that great. So I think we grab the glimmer. The wand itself is trash, but I want the glimmer, so we can just grab. Yeah, grab the and the and the, the bolt too. I guess the thunder there, the lightning. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me just grab this. And we'll do a little bit of rearranging. Okay, this is what we finally settled on. Take a look. It's pretty good. Pretty good. We uh, all right. Grab the saving grace. That's pretty good. That's going to do a decent amount of damage. Um, hmm. Is there any way to speed that up at all? Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. I'll explain. So, oh, get him first. So what happened is one of the one of the the Lukis there probably broke the holy mountain either above or somebody below broke the holy mountain. That was nothing that we did. At least as far as I know, nothing that we did. So now we have angered the gods. Luckily, we are at the holy mountain just below jungle, which means that we're just going to hit three Steves. So we're going to hit a Steve, a Steve, and we got one Steve. We're going to hit a second Steve and then a third Steve right before we get to Colmy. So let's not freak out too bad. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. We're not going to have to deal with a scout. And that Steve, as you saw with the freeze, was easy enough to deal with. I, th I think we're good here. Um, all right. Dig time. Be back. Okay, so at first I kind of thought I was going to dig this way and then I realized that's just going to take too long. So what we're going to do is because jungle is still relatively safe enough for us to go, especially with our freeze tag that we have. Um, it's safe enough that we can go through the bottom of jungle. The bottom again, we can always jump into a teleporter if we have to. We take a little bit of damage going through. Not a huge problem, and then we get to here, and this is where we're going to dig straight down for a little bit. We're going to want to avoid quite a bit of this area, uh, but this is right on the side, the right-hand side of the Holy Mountain below jungle. All right, fast forward a bit. So this is more of kind of a straight down dig, and then I like to check out these areas sometimes. I don't like to skip this part because a lot of times in here... If you can manage it, there'll be some good resources in here. Sometimes you can find Ambrosia. Just this little section. You don't want to spend too much time in this biome at all, if you can avoid it. Unless you're like, you know, like super noita player. But for those of us who are just trying to get our first win, we're playing along at home with the home game. You got to make sure that you have enough to get you through here. So let's see. Oh, there's a wand over there. So picking up a little bit of gold, picking up a little bit of wands. Like I said, Ambrosia would be killer. Ambrosia would... Oh, there's a heart too. That's perfect. Uh, that's really interesting, but it has too few slots. Make a great Tele wand. If we were to want to teleport places, that's... Yeah, that's a fun one, but just what we have right now, I think we're, we're getting more mileage out of it doing what we're doing. So let's continue on. I think from here... We'll dig straight down for a bit. Now I can hear some people complaining already. I can hear, oh, why? Why so slow? Why don't you just, just go through the area? Just, it's not that big of a deal. It's safe, it's fine. What I'm trying to show is for people like me who have a difficulty sometimes managing their health, this is probably the better alternative for you. Oh, that's just a bomb. That's probably gonna blow up a bunch of stuff over there. Uh, that's actually gonna help us out though because that'll get us to the teleporter a little quicker. All right, let that burn off. Yeah, uh, for me and for others like me, digging through and avoiding as much combat as possible, especially when the main reason is I have the win. I have the win in my pocket. I've got freeze kick. I'm going to freeze Colmy and jump right in his face and kick him. It's going to be literally a three second Colmy kill. Not that that's super impressive because he's just a, he's a zero orb Colmy, but still, for those who have never fought Colmy or those who have fought Colmy and died, because you've tried to kill him with your your pew pew wand. All right, we're going to reroll this. What did we get? Uh, that's that's tempting, but that will cut the capacity and our wands are already pretty low capacity. I don't see any of these like working very well with high mana and half of their wand spaces, so that's not great. So let's take the repelling sector in the front. This is just piling on defense after defense after defense. I can only afford the 1100 one, but let's just look at these anyway. Just in case. Ooh, that has speed. Ooh, mana, mana, mana. Perfect, perfect. This is going to be great. This is going to revolutionize what we're doing here. This is going to make it so that we have a wand that consistently fires super quick and also can freeze so let me take a moment i will actually i'm gonna fast forward while i do the tinkering just so you can see what i'm tinkering with but it is gonna take a little bit so okay so we're messing around messing around you can see just moving a few things here 
And then what you're going to finally see, you can sort of see the one that's up there. Our final destination is going to be what we have up top. See that one? You can pause it if you need to to take a look. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty sweet right now. It's got enough mana that I can fire it at will. And it does the freeze. I'm letting off on that. So that, that actually was fine. So another decision that you have to make now that you are at... Uh, well, right now, it doesn't really matter. We can dig right through this. We've already angered the gods, so we don't have to do the whole, like, dig up through the top thing. We can just dig right through the side. They're already mad anyway. Who cares? So normally what I'll do is I will dig through almost the entirety of the holy mountain. And then I will dig straight down. But let me fast forward at least to the part, because I, I do things a little bit different on this run, just so that you can see. But I need to get to a part that's a little cleaner than this. Okay, so I promise all I did was kind of move forward a little bit. And I want to show you that with the wand that I have now, even with these high-powered enemies, if I stay to the top, and if I go slow, and if I'm very careful about not hitting enemies that immediately zap me back, and kind of make these little choke points so that the enemies see how the enemies can't get through. Make a little choke point like that. And you could do this very, very simply, very successfully. You gotta have good defense to do this. That's why I'm not as afraid to do this. Normally, I would dig this. I would totally be digging through somewhere. Either through the entire Holy Mountain, which would take a long time. Um, or I would be going through the above level right at the bottom or digging through the bottom a bit. I would be doing something. I'll, I'll tell you that much. I would not be hustling my way through here normally. But with my high defenses and a good wand that has freeze on it, and freeze is going to affect most of the enemies that I'm dealing with, this is actually pretty safe. I would not go down through the middle section of this. I would be very careful about just like running through, especially because this environment that I'm in, this biome that I'm in, has a, has a condition on it. It has, I think it's booby trapped is what it is and that's not normal that normally doesn't happen okay those ticks you can't kill them you just kind of have to dig around them i guess am i gonna dig around him or am i just gonna try to hustle past him uh dear, dear. digging is gonna take forever dude oh and he's just gonna he's gonna chase me even with good digging this is this is a pain um let me see no see he's gonna he's still he's still gonna angle up at me here i think i should just go by him probably maybe go underneath him yeah he hurts pretty bad too uh all right so he's gonna follow me down there let me see what down here looks like if we've got maybe we can find his crystal and destroy it uh that's not his crystal that is a boom crystal. Yeah, see, that's going to cause an earthquake right over there. You never want to destroy those up close. Actually, I wouldn't destroy any crystals up close. I would stay away from most of these crystals if you could. All right, let's sneak by him. See, freeze gives us a second to react with these guys too. Like when they get right up on us, they don't immediately kill us, even though we, we do get hit a little bit here. Freeze just gives you that extra second. Freeze is just so powerful, guys. I'm going to tell you, like, you want to win a run. If I'm going to tell you what winning a run means to me, it's defensive perks, freeze, and a way to dig or invisibility. Great digging, freeze, and invisibility. Even, even a bad wand with freeze on it can still win the run for you. As long as you can get to Komi, you can do it. All right, I'm going to dig through this part here because of this guy. Let me fast forward. This is like really slow. Okay, that notice that tick is still following me quite a bit. All right, this part right here, you need to be very careful. There's lava at the bottom usually, so make sure you drop to the right-hand side of this. Now we can dig all the way down to the last holy mountain. You'll dig straight down until you get to just above the entrance to the Holy Mountain, or the exit to the Holy Mountain, I should say. And then you're going to dig this sideways over here because you don't want to walk into the Holy Mountain. You'll crush it. 
So you want to break in through the top like this, grab our perk, projectile repulsion field. This is it, run's over. Run has been canceled for this. Pull me is dead. I could I could just walk out. I don't even need anything in here. We're done. We're done. Actually, I need the heart. So let's kill Steve-O first. That way, if we take any damage from him, we can heal it with the heart. But, oh, we, oh, geez. Yeah, he's, he's feisty. He's feisty. This is where he gets you. So you just gotta, like I said, when you're dodging, wait till the bolt gets near you before you dodge. Don't, don't dodge into things. Don't pre-dodge. Uh, any of this stuff? I don't even care. What do I care, right? Just grab the heart. Okay, now call me. We're gonna go right underneath him. Uh, let's see. Any of this? I don't, we don't, I, who cares about this stuff, right? I mean, do I really care? You know what? You know what? You know what? Actually, let's, um, no, our teleport's fine. That's fine. I was gonna, I was gonna make a better telly one, but honestly, all right, put the telly in second position because we might need to teleport away. Very unlikely. All we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot Comey until he's frozen. We're gonna fly up to him and we're gonna kick him. You might want to set your kick button to a mouse button, like your uh, third mouse button or your fourth mouse button, something you can click with your thumb. That way you can make it nice and easier. Just get right underneath him, grab it, shoot, and kick. Boom, done. That's it. That's it. And I even have freeze so I can kill all this lava here. I don't even have to worry about the lava. So for fun, we're going to make a lava statue, a lava column. That easy, guys. That easy. That's all you have to do to kill Comey. That's it. It's nothing. He's nothing. With freeze, he's nothing. If you've got a way to freeze him, done. Then all you got to do is let yourself die. In fact, we're, <laughs> we've are we got a decent amount of defense and a decent amount of revives. So we don't die right away. Then you let the credits roll. So in summary, how did we beat this run? What is it that you really need to do to beat a run like this? Our key components that we had. Defensive perks. Great digging freeze and just a little bit of caution i didn't even avoid every single spot of every single bad <laughs> biome i did go through and i did sort of play around with diving in and out of biomes grabbed a few resources here the ones we got were not spectacular but we managed to find enough things to make them work chainsaw was a big help um but that's all you got to do guys that's it Hopefully that gives you a little bit more than you had before. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, I know I only have 11 wins on this save file. This is a, a newer save file because I was doing a sun run from scratch on a live stream to show people. Like and subscribe. Hit that notifications button. Let me know in the comments what you think of everything that we've done here. And guess what, YouTube? It's your turn. You're up.